chapter I do remember quite a bit about what they were doing and saying to me and all. They did tell me that it would be a one-hour flight from where they picked me up to where we'd be putting down, but I don't remember it being that long. At least it didn't seem that long to me. Again, I don't remember feeling very much pain, but it must have been there. The only thing I can think of is that the nerves were damaged or I was in shock. But I do remember looking around and seeing them all smiling and asking for cold water when they tried to give me warm, stale water out of a canteen. But beyond that, not really too much other stuff. My deepest regret is that I didn't personally thank those fellows right there on board the chopper. I don't know, I was just so happy. I'm sure they could see it on my face. It's just so great to know that you're not alone when you're up there flying. To know that if a pilot does go down, everything literally comes to a halt until they get him out. Then, too, I know that getting him out must be a deep satisfaction to them. I'm out of the Air Force now, back in school. I'm fine, too. Except, well, I can't quite straighten out my left arm all the way. It was broken in seven places, and I dislocated both my knees, causing me to have to wear braces on them for a short while. But recently, I did get rid of the left brace, and so even though I will have to wear the right brace for the rest of my life, I think it's a pretty small price to pay, considering where I could be now. I attribute my good condition to the great care they took of me. Twelve hours after I was picked up, I had been thoroughly checked over at one hospital and was on my way to another in the Philippines. The very next morning, I was in surgery. Then, when I'd recovered sufficiently from that, they sent me to a special orthopedic hospital at Wright-Patterson for all kinds of physical therapy. They gave me a 90% disability, but you would know it to look at me now. I'm out on temporary retirement until my condition clears up as best it can. I go back in for reevaluation every 18 months. I had a little pipe dream about staying in the Air Force or even going with an airline, but that's out now. I had a lot of time to really think about what I wanted to do for a living, and I decided my best bet was to take advantage of the vet's benefits under the GI Bill and go back to school and get my master's in business administration. They don't get them all. Nobody can bat a thousand, but they've racked up a pretty good score. Some thousand air crew members are alive today because of rescue and recovery in Southeast Asia. It's a simple philosophy. When a man is downed, he isn't just a statistic. He's a fellow American with a family at home, with hopes and dreams, and a potential that can't be measured. He's a man in trouble. He needs help fast. One air rescue pilot summed it up for all air rescue men when he said, there's nothing in the world like the feeling you get when you've saved someone's life. When you've had a part in bringing that help that others may live.